part of what our challenge is right now is that we have in some ways created a hyper individualistic society mm-hmm. where it's sort of like, it's my way. I do what I want. I live this, I do that. And while I am absolutely for people living in a way that feels authentic and true to them and to their heart, I think what we miss sometimes in that is the power and value of community and of just having others around us um, to fill their cups and to let them fill ours. Hi, I'm Deborah Rosman, and a warm welcome to our listeners. You've just heard from Leah Smart, my guest, and I'm really looking forward to our conversation on the topic of you've done everything right, but something's missing. And I'm sure we've all felt that. But Leah has some interesting perspectives on that we're going to talk about. And a little background on her, she is on the LinkedIn editorial team exploring stories and ideas that increase clarity in our lives so we can live and work in a better world. And previously, Leah was a principal learning partner at LinkedIn, where she consulted, built, designed, facilitated human development work for leadership teams. And now she has a LinkedIn news op-ed exploring human potential and improving your life and world, more meaningful living. And her podcast, which I had the honor of being a guest on, In the Arena with Leah Smart, comes out every week. And so I really enjoyed the time that we had together on her podcast. I really wanted her to be on ours because she has so much to share about human development and potential. Leah, welcome. Thank you. Thank you so much for having me. And um, like you said, I loved having you on and uh, people that listen to our show have also loved listening to you on In the Arena. So I'm glad we could do this exchange. That's great. You know, you studied human potential through positive psychology, which uh, I studied years ago after heart math, actually, and a lot of our research is when Marty Seligman started to develop positive psychology, and he and I met several times. You know, we're trying to understand, all of us, how we humans can become the best versions of ourselves um, at work, at home, in life. What did you discover in your journey on that? And, And has anything changed since the pandemic? Yeah, so um I I kind of fell into positive psychology on my search and um I heard someone say the other day that they found their sense of purpose and meaning uh through necessity. And that was certainly for me. You know, I had come to a point where I was feeling like um I'd done so many things in my life that felt on paper right. I'd gone to the right schools. I had all these, all of these things, um, gotten good jobs, had great friends, uh, great relationships with my family. And I was like, this just, there's just something off. Um, so I actually fell into, not fell into, I should say, I approached um, spirituality first and then found positive psychology in my search to figure out how we blend um the science of what we're learning with uh, the ancient wisdom of what's existed. And so I, I kind of fell into that and got really excited about the idea that both can be true. I think a lot of times we think that, you know, science or people in general think like, oh, science and spirituality don't belong together. What is spirituality? I mean, there are all these big questions that we all have, and we may not have perfect answers to. Um, but what I feel like is the essence of the reason I'm doing this and the reason that um, I get to interview people like you and that we have listeners is that there are so many people out there who are looking for a sense of meaning and purpose in life. And historically, we found it in lots of different places. Um, but it feels today that in, you know, I'm 35 and in my generation of millennials and in Gen Zers, um, we are, many of us are less um, tied to some of the places we used to find a sense of meaning and purpose and feel a little more untethered. So what I found is that I think we all have this desire to find meaning and purpose. Lots of us feel lost or feel misguided and that um, there are plenty of ways 
create and cultivate that. But when I look at uh, some of the tenets around positive psychology and look at some research I've found, you know, ancient wisdom and uh, my study of Kabbalah and Jewish mysticism, um, is that there are some core things that seem to tie it all together. Um, and so that's what I'm sort of on search for. And I'd say nothing has changed since uh, the pandemic, except I think we need it even more. So, Leah, you said not much has changed since the pandemic, except more people are really looking for meaning. And if you look at the craziness in the world, it's totally understandable what people are trying to find their way. Like, where do I anchor myself? Because there's so much that's just unpredictable. We have to go deeper in our hearts and we can feel something's definitely missing personally, socially, globally. <laughs> Mm -hmm. uh, but I think I was so intrigued by what you said in the title of this. You've done everything right, but something's missing. Because at different times in life, or even in a month, we can feel fulfilled and then no feel something's missing. What was your personal experience of that? Of something's missing. What did you find missing? Yeah. So uh, what was missing for me was a sense of uh, a sense of a connection to a deeper part of myself mm -hmm. and to something greater than myself. Um, and I say that really specifically because I'm not talking not that this is um, that I'm saying that this is a negative, but I'm not talking specifically about one specific religion or one specific form of, you know, I was just hearing that a third of millennials call them, call ourselves the nuns, which is N O N E S spiritual, but not religious. Mm -hmm. um, right. So I'm talking about a connection to yourself and I'm talking about a connection to something greater. And I, like, I think everyone else in history, I'm not here necessarily, um, well, I won't say like everyone else in history, I'll say, I am not here to define what that is. I am here to share that that's a way forward that can be really meaningful. And my experience was, um, you know, I grew up in California. I have always wanted to um, live in New York. I moved to New York. I had a great job. I had a great life. I was living in an apartment by myself. I mean, it was all the mm. things, right? All the material level dreams had kind of manifested. And, you know, I was in my late 20s and realized that even with all of that, I was still experiencing anxiety to the point that I didn't, I didn't, I didn't know how to get out of it. I didn't know what it was. I thought I was able, I was just going to be able to do these things. And all of a sudden I would feel great and I would be happy and it would be happily ever after forever and ever. Amen. You know, and that was not the case. So, um, what I realized was that I had, was putting so much uh, worth and value into the external world and what was going on outside of me that I had put so little investment and stock into what was going on inside of me. So my missing was the inward journey. Yeah. Oh, that's very well said. You know, I have a lot of compassion for younger generation, people your age and younger who are sort of searching, trying to find their way in the, all the noise. And it really does end up saying, what is the inner journey? And, there doesn't seem to be a lot of guidance for that younger generation resonates with. Like for myself, a baby boomer, that was a whole wave when I was in my 20s. Everybody was starting to meditate or look within, or it was like a novelty thing to find mm. that inner guide. And obviously, heart math has been all about how do you connect with that inner guidance system? so that you really can rely on it and build that connection of awareness that your heart's intelligence is there to really guide you like a best friend. But how do you communicate? How do you reach out? I mean, my care, my compassion is there's got to be a way and you're doing it so well as a voice for this younger generation. Um, we had a lot of hope and idealism and it's, it's hard to have idealism right now. There's so much, like you said, anxiety, overwhelm, depression. Um, many have lost hope, which is understandable. How do we, how do you reach people? How do you see this shifting? You know, I, um, 
think you start with like changing yourself and then you change the world. Right. Um, I, I do deeply believe, you know, as I, as I continue to do more research, I'm certainly still working all of this out for myself and hopefully it will be for the rest of my life. Like all of us working all of this out. Um, I deeply believe that, you know, um, being of service to others and contributing is very important. And it is like, it is where we get, I think so much of our meaning, purpose and value. But if you don't start with yourself and start with, um, where you are and how you relate to you and your relationship in there, it's really tough to give all of the love that you have, which can be, you know, love, love can be compassion. Love can be friendship. Love can be romantic love. Love can be support. There are so many ways that we can give love. Uh, if we can't give that to ourselves, I don't really believe that we can give the full extent of it to anyone else either. Um, certainly we can love things, right. More than maybe we love ourselves, but, um, I don't think we can give our full extent of the love that we have unless we've, we've peeled that back. So part of me believes, or a large part of me believes that uh, it's about changing our relationship to ourselves and then uh, figuring out whatever the way is that we want to impact or contribute to the world. It, these things can, you know, you turn the news on for five minutes and you go, how am I ever supposed to make a difference? Mm. But the reality is like, it's not up to you and you and you and each individual to make the difference in, to make a difference at such a large scale, it's up to each of us to decide how we want to make a difference and go forth. And so I always phrase it as you're changing your corner of the world. Could that just be you and your partner or you and a couple of friends or you and your children? Of course, because more, the more of us that do it, if just each of us decided we would make our families and our, our small communities better, because we change ourselves and we support other people in doing the same, our world would transform. So I, I think that our connection to each other through the media, through social media is incredible and that we can see, we can talk to somebody across the world at any given time, but some of what it does, it, it, it changes our relationship to the localized impact we can have. And I believe that that's, uh, that is something that so many of us can, can cultivate to feel more empowered about changing the world. Oh, that's beautifully said. You know, there is from our research, and I think a lot of people feel this, especially once you start looking within, there is a heart awakening happening at the same time as all this chaos in the external world. Mm -hmm. um, the heart is where we feel that connection. The heart is where you can feel a hole in the heart or where something's missing. And that's where we want to feel full. And like you said, it's when the heart is full is what we have to give to others. And it's where people of diverse belief systems, cultures, religions, political beliefs, gender persuasions, all of that backgrounds can finally come together and get along. Mm -hmm. And so it's a central place that we all have in common. We may have different beliefs and minds and backgrounds, but we all pretty much have similar feelings. Mm -hmm. And, you know, and I think that's, that's the message or one of the messages of HeartMath that I feel I'm we're trying to bring to the world, the Ad Heart podcast is that's where you can fill the missing place, but we doesn't start with that connection with oneself. Mm -hmm. And, you know, People are so protective out of insecurity of their points of view, their beliefs, judgmental and fearful of others. The separation we see is so extreme, you know, that right now, but the heart and our just being kind and compassionate is a non-threatening common denominator <laughs> in conversations, you know. Um, our Surgeon General, Dr. Murthy, just released an advisory this month on loneliness. And like we have an epidemic of loneliness. It's quite amazing what they found in the health, mental health, physical health consequences, even though people are more connected than ever online, they're very lonely, meaning their heart's not connecting. And he suggests just being kind, just a few acts of, of care and respect and compassion can help feel that whole. So a movement of heart-based compassion and cooperation is what he's saying we need for this epidemic. And I thought that was really fascinating because that's certainly what the research of heart math is finding. And the research of science coming together with spirituality, as you said, is so important to move people to go within, to connect. 
And just wondering if what you've thought about all this. Yeah, you know, um, I, I think we've all experienced loneliness at some point or another. We've all been, you know, you can be in a crowd of people and feel lonely. You can be by yourself and feel lonely. Um, loneliness and aloneness are two different things. Um, it's funny, though, though, that, you know, when you're lonely, your first reaction is to go even further into yourself, you know, and away from others. And you like sequester yourself. Like you're, you're some sort of like, you know, like, like you're not supposed to be in society because you feel lonely, but the antidote to loneliness is to find somewhere to reach out or reach within or, or um, not reach within, but to reach out because we're supposed to be here to be connected to each other. And part of what stirs up for me is, you know, we've, we live in, you know, the United States and, um, I love, I mean, I, I feel so fortunate for so many reasons to live here. And I think part of what our challenge is right now is that we have in some ways created a, a hyper individualistic society mm-hmm. where it's sort of like, it's my way. I do what I want. I live this, I do that. And while I am absolutely for people living in a way that feels authentic and true to them and to their heart, I think what we miss sometimes in that is the power and value of community and of just having others around us um, to fill their cups and to let them fill ours. And uh, I think because right now our nation and I think the world is so divided, but our nation is very divided. um, It makes it harder to just connect in the way we all used to, it seems. Yeah. 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 No, I agree. And human beings are social creatures. I mean, if you just look at uh, anthropology, we're even our babies. We want to connect mm-hmm. emotionally. And somehow this individualistic concept has isolated us more and more. And people are looking for their tribe. They're looking for meaning. They're looking for connection. Mm-hmm. And I thought it was really interesting, you know, having looked at positive psychology years ago about how to be positive, how to lift your attitude, which changes how you perceive and think. You talk about applied positive psychology. And I was curious, Mm -hmm. what does applied mean? And why is that different? Yeah. So um, the way I think about it or look at it is that um, I think my, my job, uh, not my job I get paid for, but the job, you know, what I'm supposed to be doing here is I'm someone who is an, I am an incessant learner. I am super curious. I love going and digging and doing the research and understanding things more for myself. Um, I recognize that not everyone has the time, space, or interest in doing that, but every single person wants to be happier. Every single person wants to be better, right? Um, They just may not know how to get there. And so part of my goal in, I mean, the essence of what I do with the show and my work is I'm trying to take the things that have felt inaccessible and make them accessible. Mm -hmm. When they talk about applied positive psychology, um, the purpose of, you know, the program that's at Penn that Martin Seligman started is that it's actually a program you do while you're working with mm-hmm. the idea being that you go right back into your current environment of work, whatever it is, um, whether it be that you're in a corporation or you're running your own business and working with people and coaching them, that you are immediately giving people what they need instead of disappearing for 12 months only to come out and say, here's what I think you can do. And so, you know, that's the the piece to me of applied is what are we learning and how do you put it into practice right away? And I, I think we can get stuck sometimes in the, you know, I'm not a huge fan of like just the tips and tricks and strategies. And here's, here's the one, two, threes of how you do it. But I do see the value in giving people uh, tools they can start to use because this all starts with just scratching the surface a little bit. And so to me, that's what applied means is what can you do today right away? that can help change you in some way, shape, or form on your way to becoming transformed. That's wonderful. And that's why tools, bringing it to the street is a terminology we use a lot at HeartMath, applying what you do and what you shift inside yourself and taking it into action. So thank you for that. And that's a great lead-in to our heart meditation, what we're going to do together of adding heart energy to whatever might be missing in our lives to see what our next step is. So let's do this together. Let's shift to our focus in the area of the heart. Just center there. 
And as we breathe in through the area of the heart and out through the area of the heart, it begins to bring our autonomic nervous system and our heart rhythms into increased coherence. And just breathe through the heart area some appreciation for yourself, for each other, for the good things in your life, because that helps increase your heart coherence and how the heart and brain can sync up. Now ask yourself, if you've done everything best you know, but something still missing applies to you, what might that be? Just get in touch with that. Or was something shared today that was an aha or meaningful for you? Get in touch with that. Now, as you continue heart focus and heart focus breathing, listen to your heart. Ask your heart's intuitive guidance for any inspiration or clarity and what your next step is, either to fill that missing part or next step toward increasing your meaningful experience of life, your fulfillment. And just quietly sense any response, any thoughts, any feelings. If you sincerely ask, you may not get an answer right in the moment, but usually that sets energies in motion for something to come to you. Today, tomorrow, that answers that question. Now, whatever came to you, even if it's just a feeling of weight, let go, whatever, just radiate your heart-powered intention, your heart energy into that for forward movement in your next steps. Now let's close by co-creating a reservoir of heart energy. Just putting our heart into it. Imagine a reservoir of our collective heart energy that each of us can tap into, can access as needed over the next month. When we feel something missing or we need support to follow through on our heart's direction, we're here for each other. And that heart energy can really help amplify our own heart's guidance. So let's co-create